Welcome to this lesson, where we begin in the warm-up area just short of the active runway, and will perform a conventional takeoff and basic handling drills. Interestingly, conventional takeoffs, or CTOs, aren't the default type of takeoff, although they are the easiest to perform. The Harrier was designed from the ground up as a VSTAL aircraft, and as such, CTOs tend only to be used when asymmetric loadings or high crosswinds preclude the use of any other type of takeoff. In this mission, we will practice without any asymmetry or crosswinds for training purposes, but you should train with various configurations and weather conditions to become proficient when it counts. We will begin with pre-positioning and takeoff checks. Pre-positioning checks are performed in accordance with the mnemonic C waiver, which stands for clock, weapons, avionics, IFF, video recording system, electronic countermeasures, and radar altimeter. First, set the clock by pressing the timer, or TMR button, on the UFC. Select TTT with ODU2 and then press ODU1 and verify that the clock shows 8 AM. Next, press ODU5 and check that the UTC time shows 4 AM. Verify that this is the same as the time shown in the cockpit watch and on the HUD. At this point, you could also set the desired time on target, but we don't need to do it for this sortie. Next, you would program your weapons via the UFC Weapons, or WPN button, and ODU. Since we aren't carrying weapons for this familiarization flight, we'll skip this step. It will be explained with greater detail in Stores Management Training Mission. Configure your avionics for the sortie. On the right MPCD, return to the menu on push button 18, press T-Pod on push button 13, and verify that the standby mode is underlined on push button 15. Set your FLIR by pressing menu, push button 18, and then FLIR, push button 1. Set the mode back to black or white by pressing push button 20. Set up your take-in by pressing the TCN button. Enter 67 on your scratch pad for Cabaletti and press enter. Next, turn it on by pressing the on-off button. You will notice a small take and symbol appearing next to your aircraft on the left MPCD. Set up your video recording system by setting your VRS and MFCD slash HUD switches as desired. Next, you would set your electronic countermeasure switches by performing a bit and monitoring for failures. This isn't necessary on our fan flight, so we'll skip it. Finally, set your radar altimeter low altitude warning to 4,900 feet. First, press Alt button on your UFC. Next, colonize GPS with ODU button 3 and check that the Ground Proximity Warning System, or GPWS, is colonized. Type 4900 and press Enter. You may leave Bomb and Pull Up Queue, or PUC, uncolonized as we will not be employing ordnance. Confirm that your canopy is locked and that your canopy closed light is extinguished. Make sure that the ejection seat is armed by checking that the ground safety control handle on the right side of the seat is closed and pointing down. Recheck that your standby instruments match. In Instrument Meteorological Conditions, or IMC, or at night, we would turn on the APU. Since it's clear and unlimited, we'll leave this off. Ensure the anti-skid switch is in the on position. Next, we will check our abort numbers for the field we're on. On the right MPCD, select Menu on push button 18, select V-Rest on push button 8, and box Short Takeoff. On the ODU, select Field Data, or FDAT, with ODU button 4, colonize Runway Distance, or RDIS, with ODU button 1, and input a runway length of 7870 feet into the scratch pad confirming your entry with the Enter button on the UFC. The length is the distance between the start of your takeoff roll and the long field arresting gear, if installed. Colonize Runway Heading, or RHDG, with ODU button 2, enter a runway heading of 244 degrees magnetic, and confirm your entry with the Enter button on the UFC. Colonize Groundwind, or GWND, with ODU button 3, Enter a ground wind direction of 238 degrees magnetic and a magnitude of 02 knots, and confirm your entries with the Enter button on the UFC. Verify that Dry Runway, or RDRY, is colonized in ODU Window 5, as we are experiencing dry runway conditions. If it isn't, press the button. 
Calculate your abort criteria by pressing the abort button on push button 16 on your VRS stow page. Your abort speed, or ASPD, and stopping distance, SDST, values will be displayed. We will talk about the others during the short takeoff and landing lesson. Place your altitude, or ALT, switch in the radar, or RDR, position. Make sure that your INS knob is in the IFA position to ensure a tightly coupled GPS and INS throughout your flight. Turn your approach light on. Next, we will begin our takeoff checklist, which consists of another series of finger checks, so named because they are signaled and confirmed with the fingers extended. The first check is a one-finger configuration check, followed by either a two-finger dry acceleration check or a five-finger wet acceleration check. Conventional takeoffs, or CTOs, are typically used in high crosswind conditions or with asymmetric stores loaded on the aircraft that put it out of limitations for a short takeoff, or STOW, or rolling vertical takeoff, or RVTO. Begin one-finger checks by pressing the VSTOL Master Mode button to colonize the ODU with VSTOL options. Select Nozzle Rotation Airspeed, or NRAS, with ODU button 1 and enter a value of 135 knots in the scratch pad. Confirm entry with the Enter button on the UFC. This will box the HUD airspeed indicator when the aircraft has reached the entered speed. Normally used to indicate when to rotate the nozzles, in a conventional takeoff we will use this as an indication to rotate the aircraft off the ground. Select Pitch Carrots, or PC, with ODU button 2 and verify a default setting of 14 degrees in the scratch pad and confirm with the Enter button. This sets the Pitch Carrots to 6 degrees above the horizon where we will seek to place the Depressed Altitude Indicator, or Widget's Hat, for an accelerating transition into wingborne flight, or, in the case of a conventional takeoff, a positive rate of climb. Ensure the short takeoff, or stow stop lever, is stowed in its full aft position. Trim the stabilator to 2 degrees nose down. Set flaps to auto, observe 25 degrees in the flaps position indicator, and verify that no warning, caution, or advisory lights are illuminated. Set the nozzle lever to 50 degrees and verify that the engine display panel matches and that the flaps remain at 25 degrees with no droop light. Reset the nozzle lever to 10 degrees. We will not be using the VRS computer for rotation speed, as it does not calculate performance for conventional takeoffs. Request permission from tower to take the active runway. Couple Eddie, Dodge 1-1, one, one. request taxi to runway. When you receive the clearance, release the brakes and taxi onto the runway, steering the aircraft onto the runway center line. Lady. Dodge 1-1. One, one. Request takeoff. Dodge 1-1. Go Apply the brakes to come to a stop with the aircraft nose pointed down the runway. From this position, we will conduct two-finger Excel checks and immediately transition into our takeoff roll. 
We will cover five finger wet acceleration checks in the FARP operations lesson. Begin dry acceleration checks by verifying that the stow stop is clear. Select menu on the right AM PCD, push button 18, select engine, and it's ENG, on push button 11, and press acceleration, or XL, on push button 16. Keep your wheel brakes pressed. Advance the throttle to just above 60%, then reduce power to maintain 60%. The aircraft will time how long it takes for the engine to spool between 35% and 60%. Verify that this value is between 2.4 and 3.1 seconds on the ENG page. Next, place the nozzles at 30 degrees and check that the duct pressure is between 45 and 47 psi. Once verified, place the nozzles back at 10 degrees. On the left MPCD, select EHSD with push button 2 or sensor select switch left. On the right MPCD, select FLIR with sensor select switch right. Two finger checks are now complete. Initiate your takeoff. Engage nose wheel steering by holding the NWS switch on your stick. Keep your wheel brakes pressed. Advance the throttle to full power. Release the brakes before the tire skid. Verify top end RPM is achieved. Steer the aircraft for center line. You'll begin to have aerodynamic control of the rudder at 50 to 60 knots. At 135 knots, indicated by the box around your airspeed indicator, rotate with slight aft stick. Congratulations, you're airborne. As the aircraft leaves ground effect, apply forward stick to set and keep the witch's hat indicator inside the pitch carrots, ensuring a positive rate of climb. Raise the landing gear by placing the landing gear handle in the up position. Nozzle out to zero degrees by advancing the nozzle lever to fully forward. With nozzles aft, your duct pressure should read between zero and three PSI. Do not exceed 300 knots. Begin a gradual turn toward the range area. Check your VSTOL HUD to verify flaps and nozzles are set as desired, and when satisfied, select the NAV Master Mode button. The AV-8B Harrier climbs at a constant airspeed until the aircraft intercepts a specified Mach number, at which point, constant Mach climb is conducted. We begin our climb out when the aircraft approaches 300 knots calibrated airspeed. With the stick, pitch up to between 20 and 35 degrees to maintain 300 knots calibrated airspeed. Then, adjust your nose attitude to hold the airspeed until climb Mach is achieved. This usually happens between 25,000 and 27,000 feet. As you pass 10,000 feet MSL, check fuel transfer and quantity on the fuel panel and check that your cabin pressure is holding steady at 8,000 feet. As you pass 18,000 feet, set your altimeter to 29.92 via the knob on the standby altimeter and verify that the altimeter setting appears correct under the altitude box on the HUD. Check that the cabin pressure continues to read 8,000 feet until you climb above 23,000 feet. A mock climb is based on aircraft drag index. In a clean configuration, your predicted Mach number should be approximately 0.75 Mach. Continue to adjust the nose attitude to maintain this Mach number.
As you pass 29,000 MSL, reduce your rate of climb to 1,000 feet per minute or less. As you approach 30,000 MSL, level off by smoothly dropping the nose and bringing the velocity vector to the horizon. Reduce power to approximately 50 to 60 pounds per minute, or PPM, reference on the engine display panel, or EDP. Reduce airspeed to achieve approximately 6.5 degrees AOA, your max range cruise angle of attack, reference on the HUD. To confirm your optimal cruise knots calibrated airspeed, or Mach number, on your right MPCD, choose Menu on push button 18, then VRES page, and select Cruise, or CRS, on push button 11. Good, now let's practice a max range descent to 12,000 MSL. This descent favors fuel economy over speed and would be useful with low on fuel to maximize the distance the aircraft can fly to get home. Reduce power to idle, ensure your flaps are in auto mode, keep the speed brake retracted, and maintain a pitch setting that will keep the aircraft at Mach 0.8. To level off from a max range descent, at 1,000 feet to go from your target altitude, or 13,000 MSL, reduce your rate of descent to 1,000 feet or less and smoothly transition to a target altitude of 12,000 MSL. Now that we've leveled off, let's conduct some basic handling drills. These drills are designed to familiarize you with the capabilities, limitations, and handling characteristics of the aircraft in various flight surface configurations and flight regimes. The first drill is an energy maintaining turn, using full power at 360 knots calibrated airspeed. Advance the throttle and adjust your aircraft's pitch to maintain level flight at 360 knots calibrated airspeed.
At 360 knots calibrated airspeed, advance the throttle to full power and bank left to capture an approximate 50 degree angle of bank. Once captured, apply smooth aft pressure on the stick to maintain 12,000 MSL and 360 knots calibrated airspeed. If your speed is dropping below 360 knots calibrated, release aft pressure. If your speed is increasing past 360 knots calibrated, apply more aft pressure. Note the rate of turn and the light buffet. This is an energy maintaining turn that demonstrates the Harrier sustained turn performance. When ready, release backstick pressure as you approach the current waypoint heading and roll to wings level. Reduce throttle and adjust pitch to maintain 360 knots calibrated airspeed. Next we will try that maneuver again, but with flaps in the cruise setting. Set the flap selector to the cruise position. Apply full power and this time bank in the other direction to capture 50 degrees angle of bank. When captured, apply aft pressure on the stick and continue to maintain 12,000 MSL and 360 knots calibrated airspeed. As you complete your turn, note the differences in sustained turn rate between automatic and cruise flap settings. Relax aft stick pressure as you approach the selected waypoint, and then roll wings level. Next, we will conduct approach to stall drills. These drills demonstrate the aircraft's high AOA handling characteristics and how to recover from a stall. Maintain 12,000 MSL and bring the throttle to idle. Maintain level of flight with smooth, gradual aft stick pressure and observe the aircraft AOA approach 17 to 18 units. At the onset of wing rock or buffet, Release aft stick pressure to reduce AOA and then apply full power, monitoring side slip and correcting with the rudder. The goal is to reduce the AOA to within 10 to 12 units and recovering back to 12,000 MSL. Note that if you apply full power prior to reducing AOA, it could cause the nose to pitch up and cause an aircraft departure from controlled flight.
Reset the flaps to auto by placing the flap selector switch to the auto position. Let's try that again, but this time in a dirty configuration. At 12,000 MSL, slow the aircraft to below 250 knots calibrated airspeed and lower the landing gear by placing the landing gear lever in the down position. Establish and try to keep an airspeed that corresponds to 10 units of AOA. Continue to slow down to capture 15 units of AOA. At the onset of wing rock or buffet, again relax the aft stick pressure and apply full power, monitoring side slip and correcting with the rudder. Once 10 to 12 units of AOA are recaptured, raise the landing gear by placing the landing gear lever in the up position and continue to maintain 12,000 MSL and 360 knots calibrated airspeed. For the next descent, we'll practice a tactical descent to 7,000 MSL that favors speed and energy retention over fuel economy. You will reduce the power to 65%, ensure your flaps are in auto mode, keep the speed brake retracted, and maintain a pitch setting that will maintain Mach 0 0.8 or 350 knots calibrated, whichever is lower. You may begin your descent. At 1,000 feet to go, or 8,000 MSL, ensure your nose is no lower than 10 degrees, and smoothly transition into level flight at 7,000 MSL and 360 knots calibrated airspeed. Lastly, let's examine level and descending turn performance with nozzles configured for landing. This will demonstrate how the aircraft will behave in the landing pattern, and will set you up well for future lessons where we will cover short, rolling vertical, and vertical landings. Slow the aircraft to below 250 knots calibrated airspeed, and lower the landing gear by placing the landing gear lever in the down position. Observe four green down and locked indications. Select VSTOL HUD Master Mode and set the nozzles to 25 degrees by pulling the nozzle lever aft to the appropriate setting. Take note of the AOA change on the HUD. Select STOL flaps by placing the flap selector switch in the STOL position. The STOL light will illuminate. Slow the aircraft to 10 units of AOA and stabilize at 7000 MSL.
practice some mild level turns. Next, set the nozzles to 50 degrees by pulling the nozzle lever aft to the appropriate setting, and slow to 10 units of AOA. Note that as you decelerate through 165 knots calibrated airspeed, the flaps set themselves to 62 degrees and the ailerons will droop, causing a nose down pitch that may require aft stick pressure and additional power to compensate for. Add power as necessary to stabilize at 10 units of AOA and practice both level and descending turns, simulating aircraft behavior in various portions of the landing pattern. When you finish practicing, press the spacebar to continue. Your return to level wingborne flight is conducted by first setting full power and establishing a positive rate of climb. Raise the landing gear by placing the landing gear lever in the up position. Nozzle out to 25 degrees by pushing the nozzle lever forward to the appropriate setting. Select Auto Flaps by placing the Flap Selector switch in the Auto position. Nozzle out to 0 degrees, ensuring all landing gear lights are extinguished, and reselect the Nav HUD Master Mode. 
This concludes the takeoff and basic handling tutorial. Feel free to continue practicing. In the next lesson, we will cover the landing pattern, landing checklist, a conventional landing, or CL, and post-landing checks.